Tinakwe guys. So I did a little quick video before just about like being grateful for being an optometrist and like the things I've learned in this job has just been like spectacular. But I kind of want to talk about this kind of business idea that I've had or this business, not idea, but yeah, well, I'll, I'll talk about the idea. We know that ideas aren't very useful, execution is. You can have a very average idea, but if you execute very well, that's where you're going to get a lot of success rather than really having a really good idea and poor execution. So execution really matters. I think I get that from, I saw that, I read that in Unscripted by MJ DeMarco, but it's from Derek Sivers as well, where he talks about, there's like a spectrum. So imagine if you've got one side, good idea, average idea, poor idea, and you've got execution, good execution, average, average execution, poor execution. If you have a really good idea, but even poor execution or average execution, the success rate is like the amount of money returned. If we look at success as money returned, it's very low. Versus if you have a very average idea, a very good execution or average execution, oh, sorry, average idea, but very good execution, then you get a huge return. So the execution is most important. This is a kind of, I just want to talk about an idea about combining my software coding experience with um, optometry. What I find is with optometry, the EHR or electronic health records, they're really crap. Like they're not very fast. They're quite slow, clunky. Um, some people, some optometrists even use paper records. Like they haven't made the switch yet, or they're making a switch at, at, at current, which is quite slow. And this gave me an idea that I want to be able to design my own EHR. In fact, I think the EHR, the electronic health records, that's a record you put the patient details in. I think. The electronic health record is the reason why clinicians are burning out, not just optometrists, if you can call optometrists clinicians, even doctors, anywhere, they're burning out because the EHR is not good. Because instead of treating a patient, like thinking, because the optometry should be about thinking, what does the patient want, what does the patient need? Um, oh, that reminds me too, optometry is not about convincing people, it's about helping people. If they've got a problem, you fix that problem, that's what optometry is. I just figured that out because <laughs> I always thought it was about convincing you need these glasses, you need to have these glasses. But no, people come in because they want glasses to be able to see better. If they don't want glasses, then don't convince them otherwise. Most of the time. But with with optometry, I was thinking that um, with sorry, with this kind of the EHR, as an optometrist, you should be thinking about you should be using your brain to think about solving a problem for the patient or dealing with the patient, doing a particular diagnostic test. But most of the time I find it's spent well, most of the energy is spent like entering in records or like typing in, clicking boxes. And I think that's what causes burnout in optometrists or clinicians, not the actual work. I'd love to hear what you guys' comments, comments are on that. So that's where I think the EHR workflow, the, the electronic system, the, the record workflow becomes very, very important. Like very, like it's so important that... Um, it's like for the mental well-being of all clinicians, it's like the necessary thing to make things good. Because then either clinicians leave or they burnt out, burn out, don't work. I think in New Zealand, a lot of them move from public to private because obviously if you work in private, you earn more, you can work less. And um, we want we don't want that. We want clinicians to be in the flow at work, using their brains like to the maximum, not just checking boxes, clicking boxes on an EHR or getting worried that they're going to get litigated because the EHR is not doing the job correctly. So I think that that's kind of like the purpose, the aim, right? So I, I, I think that, that that's like a the case behind why we should create a really tailor-made EHR for clinicians so that it can be in that flow to prevent burnout. And I think a lot of things is dated, it's slow, it's clunky. It's not really thought out very well because the best software engineers aren't working on these problems. The best software engineers are working at big tech companies that earn a lot of money. And I don't think EHRs earn a lot of money. I could be wrong. Or it's just people doing the best they can. Like no criticism out there to people, but they're just working the best they can. So that's where I kind of want to, I'm thinking about this idea, but I kind of pitched it, not pitched it, but I did a bit of market research. You could say I talked about it with friends and there are still some optometrists, I can only speak about optometrists, that use written records. And the initial inertia to switch to a, a, a different technology is too much. Like imagine the staff, the staff have to retrain on a different software. Even though it could be better, they still have to change their workflows. Like I think what you find is whatever EHR you use, what works, works, and you don't want to change. Like changing is very difficult. Even if it's like positive, you have to make that change very smooth, smooth transition. And what I find is like a lot of companies that are, that are advertising EHR 
I think they, they advertise like, oh, it's really fast. It's going to make your life a lot better. But the main problem is it's like the initial like changing over to the new system. And some barriers are one thing is creating um, like you have an existing database. And I know the database that's used for our current our car EHR is very outdated. Nexus DB, I think. And I, I've, been, I've looked up, like, is there a Python port for it? Or can you use Python to extract from Nexus DB? I can't find a library on it. So um, switching to a new technology, or you try to use a new technology stack, even though that's not really important, a new technology stack, because a new technology stack will be where the like, latest features fast, run a bit faster as well. That's going to be very hard because the current system is so outdated that you can't get it from A to B. So that migration part is actually really hard. It costs a lot of money and it's really risky. Like imagine losing your entire patient record. Um, so that's one problem that's not really addressed, I think. And so the, the, the two problems are migration is very difficult and the initial inertia to change. Even though it's going to be better, the, you need to like get over that. You need to get the ball rolling first and that's the hardest part. Unless like the change is hugely, dramatically better. Another thing too is I was going to say, sorry guys. Uh, another thing too is cloud-based systems. So I think a lot of people aren't really keen on a cloud-based system. They'll prefer to have something in, in the house, in-house. You don't want a server somewhere across the world. You want it to be at your present location. You want to have a server in your present location. And a lot of solutions now are cloud-based and it's not, not very popular. Cloud-based, obviously there's running costs involved as well. Some people don't like that. Um, I remember I was talking to someone, like these are very few people. I was talking to one person and they have this, they have their own setup workflow and they don't want to be clicking boxes all the time. Like already, I'm not, I've, not, I've just, I've, I just mentioned what could be made better. And then they've already, people, business owners of optometrists already have these preconceived notions that it's going to be terrible. So it's that link between UI, user experience and the technology. There's that kind of this gap and I know it's being filled, but I think UI UX is mainly used for how to optimize click-through rate for a website, how to make the website faster. It's not like really caring about the actual person using the software. Those things are hard to measure. And what makes the most money? Being able to increase click-through on a on an e-commerce website rather than making a clinician's life better. And it, it's money comes first, guys. That's that's the idea. And so these are kind of the problems that I see. I don't know, I don't know how to fix them. The it's, it's going to be harder than I actually think. I thought I could just create it with Django, use Django like but host it host it locally. I thought it'd be like just that easy, but it's not. <laughs> um, it'd be cool if it was open sourced as well, but so, open source but with some sort of sponsorship. I don't know. Um, yeah, so no cloud based people want local storage, um, and then setting all that up the infrastructure up would be quite costly as well. Um, and yeah, I think that's really, really it. Um, oh yeah, I was, talking to, I was talking to one of my old bosses about making your own EHR and he said like the, up, the upstarting investment is 250K, $250,000 or something that doesn't seem like I've already kind of shot it down a wee bit. I could be just a negative person, but I did have this idea on this walk this morning thinking about making an EHR. So as always guys, um, I hope you enjoy this double dose of videos as well. And if you guys want to comment, or I really appreciate you getting up to this part in the video, just me rambling, sharing ideas. So as always, guys, take care and I'll talk soon. And sorry, sorry, stay focused and talk soon.